Okay guys, so I was playing Harry Potter with my brother. I found this stick, right? And it's got a very weird end. And I'm like, what the hell? So, this happens. Yeah, I know, what the fuck just happened? Okay, so we're in the new project, so let's go and create a new composition by either hitting Command N or going up here to the composition and hitting New Composition. I'll go ahead and call this Spell, and I'll set the background color to black because it really doesn't matter and it's not going to be shown up anyways. So after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and import my footage. So I have this saved on my desktop and it is this one. Whatever file you are using. So after you import it, go ahead and drag it into your composition. Alright, there we go. We're going to zoom in so we can get it to the whole thing, and then we'll set the end of the composition using N to be the end of the video. After that, you can hover over your work area, right click, and say trim comp to work area. Now, I have some footage that I don't want to use, like when I'm setting up the camera and when I'm going to turn off the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that out now, and I'll be right back after I do that. I'm just going to use the slider here to trim it down a little bit. So I've got it just about where I want it to start. So now I'm going to select the video. And while it's selected, I'm going to hit Command-Shift-D or Control-Shift-D if you're on a Windows. This will cut the clip where the marker is so that you can delete out any extra stuff. So now I'm going to go to about where I want to start casting the spell. So I'm having a bit of trouble finding it. So I'm having a little bit of trouble finding it. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in using this thing down here so I can move the time indicator smaller distances. So I think I've found it. Here I am out of the shot getting ready to cast the spell and here I am casting the spell. So I'm going to use frame by frame playthrough using command and the arrow keys or if you're on a windows control and the arrow keys. So let's go backwards a few frames, okay. And right there, that's where I want the spell to start. So we're going to be using two plugins from Video Copilot to make this spell. They are Saber and Video Copilot Color Vibrance. If you need help on installing those plugins, the links will be down below to the tutorials. These are both free. After you've installed the plugins, Go into your Effects and Presets tab and type in Saber. You'll see in a Video Copilot section you have a plugin called Saber. Before we apply it to anything, let's go ahead and create a new solid by right clicking anywhere that's not on the composition. New, Solid. We'll make the background color black and hit OK. So after you've created the solid, go ahead and drag the Saber plugin onto that solid. You'll see right away that you get this kind of lightsaber looking thing. The plugin was actually m originally meant to create lightsabers, but we're going to use it for Harry Potter spells. These two things at the end of the lightsaber will move it like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it back to where it was before. If you look over here in the saber settings, it might be look a little scary at first. Don't worry, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know. So for the preset, since we're doing a spell, I've found that Fusion actually looks the best for Harry Potter spells, and I think you will agree. Okay. 
It kind of has a soft electrical look, and I think that's really good for Harry Potter spells. The glow intensity we're just going to bring up a little bit so that we can actually see it when we put it into our shot. 67 works for me. I'm also going to up the glow spread so that it spreads out a little bit more. Since I did this, I'm going to have to bring up the glow intensity again. That works. 142 and 0.29. I'm going to go ahead and change the color to the color of the spell I want. I think I'm going to try a light blue spell this time. If we move this around, you might notice something. The noise, or the dust kind of looking thing, stays with the spell. But we don't want that because that's not how it works in real life. So if we go to distortion, glow distortion, and we uncheck lock noise to saver, now the noise will be dynamic, which is very cool. Let's go and close that and open up the customized core options. So you'll see we have even more options now, and this might look even more scary. This is going to be used to animate the spell so that it moves. If you play with the start size and end size, you can find a nice effect that you like. I find that setting the end size up to 200% and the start size down to 26 makes a very good uh, spell with a nice head. I'm also going to bring up the end roundness so that it gets a little more rounded over here. I'm going to bring down, I'm going to make the halo intensity a little less so that we can see the individual pieces of the spell a little better. The core softness, I'm going to bring up so that we don't have such a straight, abrupt line at the end here. If we go into the flicker settings now, we have a few options for the flicker randomization. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the flicker speed to 17, the intensity to 10%, and the random seed to 18,000. If we go into distortion, close glow distortion, and open core distortion, we have even more options. So again, let's uncheck lock noise to saver. Oops, uh, sorry about that. And now, when we move this, the core will also change. So the core uh, noise will also change. And that's really cool. Let's go ahead and add some motion blur so that it looks more realistic. Let's bring up the noise complexity a bit so that we have more fall off. Let's bring down the scale. Or no, let's bring up the scale, sorry. No, I'm just going to not do anything to the scale. So that's all I want to do with the spell for now. Now we need to make it so that it actually shows up in our scene. But how can we do that? Well, if we go down to our black solid here, and we hit mode, and then change it from normal to screen, you'll see that it gets rid of all the black and adds it to the scene that we have. So it's a little too light to see the spell in uh, my scene. So really quickly, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a color balance effect to my scene. So just play around with these settings until you find something that works for your spell. So these are the settings I found best. I added a preserve luminance and it just instantly made it like 10 times better. So I'm just going to keep it at this and now I'm ready to edit the spell. So I'm going to select the black solid when I'm on the frame I want the spell to start on. I'm going to select the saber 
effect so I can move these things to line up with the wand. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the customized core settings and we're going to play with the start offset and the end offset. So let's start with the end offset and the start offset, both at zero. Let's go about five or six frames over and set the end offset to be 100. Let's move back two frames, maybe even three, and set another keyframe for the start offset. Let's go again five or six frames and move this up to 100 as well. So now, if I go ahead and set this to the beginning using B and this to the end using N and I go ahead and render a preview, we will see we get a cool spell effect but first it has to load. So I'll be back after it loads. Okay, so it's loaded enough. So let's go ahead and watch our preview. So I'll go back here and I'll play it. So it kind of looks small. So here's how you can tweak these settings to make it look bigger or smaller depending on what you want. If I go into the customized core settings, we have a few keyframes, so I'll zoom in on them because they're only a few frames apart. Let's see, where are they? Here's some, here they are. So you can see it's very small because we started to make it end right as it was this size. So if we want to change the size on which it starts to end, maybe this size, we'll move both of these keyframes over one frame or two frames, depending on how many frames you want to move it. So let's go ahead and go back to the start of the area and play this so far. Okay, so I think it's a little fast, so what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to actually change the interval of the keyframes. So I'll go ahead and select the ending keyframes, the two ending keyframes here, and I'll just move them back, maybe two frames. I'll go back and I'll play the preview again. So if I play it again and it loads, hold on. Um, so now it's a bit too slow and it's small again. So if we want to speed it up and make it bigger, just use the two tips I've shown you so far. So now if we play it, we get a nice little spell effect. Okay, so earlier I actually said you'd need the VC color vibrance. I lied. I forgot that Saber came with a color picture. So that's my fault. I'm really sorry if you installed that for nothing. But you didn't install it for nothing because next week's tutorial will actually use that. So I'm going to add black bars. So what I'll do is on top of everything in this composition, I will add a new solid. Make it black, since you want the bars to be black. And we'll go ahead and find the jaws effect, and we will put it onto this black solid. We'll set the completion to about 80. And we'll set the height to 0. And there we have some black bars. So if they start out in any other direction, just put them to zero 
like that. And there we go. We have a nice movie looking effect. Good enough to be in a movie. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. So, this happens.